الرحمن الرحيم يا شادي الحب هات في سيد الكائنات يا شادي الحب هات so Alhamdulillah, Shaykh Yusuf had explained to us extensively the virtues of fasting. But we will only be compensated for our actions and for our deeds if they are done according to the rules and regulations set out by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we know, I mean, this is really not rocket science. I will only be paid at work if I do my job properly. If I'm not doing my job properly, then that can have several consequences to it. So, hence, we are going to study these rules so we know how to fast properly. We know, the, we know the do's, we know the don'ts, and we observe these guidelines to the best of our ability so that we can ultimately gain those rewards which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised us. The definition of fasting, let's turn to page 10 right on the top. It's defined as refraining from eating and drinking and having marital relations with our spouses from dawn to sunset with an intention. Okay, so these are the three things we have to abstain from, from dawn, meaning the time of Fajr, as soon as Fajr begins, all the way till sunset, meaning the time of Mother. Okay, so from the beginning time of Fajr to the beginning time of Maghrib, I am going to refrain from these three things. Eating, drinking, and having marital relations with our spouse. Okay, and that has to be done with an intention. Okay, you have to deliberately do this, if you want to understand it like that. Because say for example, there's a person, he didn't have the opportunity to eat from Fajr to Maghrib, Say for example, I mean the guy was really busy. He woke up in the morning, he had to go for a very important uh, meeting at his work, and he got so tied up throughout the day, he didn't even get a chance to sip water or even have a little snack. All the way to Monday. And then at Monday time, he finally had the chance to breathe, and he started eating. So, is this person going to be considered fasting throughout the day? No, he didn't have any intention of fasting. If circumstances were just such, he didn't have the opportunity to eat or drink. So that person is not going to be considered a fasting person. The person who is considered a fasting person who is he who refrains from these three, three things intentionally, deliberately, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, first of all, the objective, كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَعْقُونَ the fasting has been prescribed for you, just like it's been prescribed for the people before you, so that you can adopt taqwa. You become pious, you become a person who can restrain and abstain from sin. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so from this we understand we have an obligation to fast. He said it has been prescribed for you. Okay, through this verse we deduce the compulsion of fasting, and that's verse, uh, or I should say chapter number 2, verse 183. That's Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 183. This verse is the very verse which is making fasting compulsory for all of us. Okay? And when do we start fasting from? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهَرَ فَلْيَصُمْ Two verses later, verse 185, He tells us that whoever witnesses the month, then he should fast. So witnessing the month begins from the first moon, okay? Not necessarily the new moon, because after the new moon is born, you have anywhere from 12 hours to 24 hours for it to become visible in the horizon. Okay, and that varies from month to month. There's no fixed amount of hours, uh, and there's really no pattern that it can be followed. So as soon as it becomes visible, that means Ramadan has begun, and the next day is when I am going to undertake fasting. And I just explained that no child is obliged to fast. However, it is, it is encouraged that, it is recommended that we try and encourage him to fast. Don't force them, but encourage them. 
as much as they can do. If they can fast half a day, fast half a day. Quarter of a day, quarter of a day. I remember when I was growing up, one of the things that my dad used to do, and you know, it was in those days when we were growing up, it was pretty much this time of the year when we had to fast, those long, long days. So what my dad used to do as an incentive, he would give me a dollar for each fast. And in those days, a dollar was a big deal. And you know how many baseball cards I could buy with that? And they used to come in packs of 25 cents with a stick of gum. Oh, I used to be really that. Okay, so one dollar, that's four packs of baseball cards or hockey cards. But that was the incentive he gave. This, we encourage them. We want our children to love Islam. We don't want them to feel that Islam is a burden. Okay, Islam is an obstacle in life. Islam is something that is going to take me backwards. It's not going to let me progress. Okay? If our actions are going to be rewarded by Allah, it will only be rewarded if the intention is correct. And that's what the Prophet ﷺ said, Deeds are solely, in the, are solely dependent on intentions. Right? So the way, whatever intention I have carried out a deed with, accordingly I'm going to be compensated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If it was for His sake, He will reward me. If it was for other corrupt motives, then it's going to have, you know, I'm, I'm going to have to suffer its repercussions. Okay, so we have to uh, make the intention. Okay, so look um, at the point, point number one. It says if a person abstains... Uh, from eating, drinking, and having marital relations throughout the day, he does not make the intention, he will not be considered a fasting person. We've already discussed this. Number two, when making an intention, no one is required to verbally express the intention. And the third point there is the intention of, for fasting should be made the night before. Hours to sleep. Okay, not even, because I have to get up before that. So say three hours. So some people, what they will do, is they'll have the meal before they go to sleep. So they don't have to wake up before Fajr. They can comfortably wake up when it's Fajr time. Hopefully they wake up before Fajr, not after Fajr. Okay, and this is the month of Ramadan. We want to try and motivate ourselves to adopt all the, the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not just fasting. Okay, so although that's acceptable, okay, however, the Sunnah is to try and make that little sacrifice to wake up a bit earlier inshallah, and have the meal at that time. Because obviously when you go to sleep, you're digesting all of that. When you wake up in the morning, your stomach's already empty. Okay, and you, I mean, we all know, the first thing that comes on our mind as soon as we wake up is Tim Rome's coffee. Okay, double double, okay, with a bagel. So this is something that is recommended. Try and delay to just before pleasure. The other, the other recommended activity of that day is to be haste in breaking the fast immediately after sunset. Don't wait for like half an hour after sunset or 15 minutes after sunset. As soon as the time of Maghrib begins, just break your fast. This is also uh, the sunnah. Some scholars have gone as far to say that delaying the breaking of the fast is makruh, meaning it's disliked. So don't delay it. Have your meal immediately. Okay, the Prophet ﷺ has actually enumerated this amongst the attributes of the Anbiya ﷺ. Those three points are there in front of you. Amongst those attributes are to break the fast immediately after sunset, to delay the pre-dawn meal, and to place the right hand over the left during prayer. These are amongst the sunnah, the practices of the Anbiya ﷺ. We want to follow in their footsteps. And number four, and this is the most important one, to occupy one's time in worship, in ibadah, as Shaykh Yusuf was telling us. Reading the Qur'an, doing tasbih, doing dhikr, trying to get yourself as close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as possible, which we termed as taqarrub. Not, what we don't want to do is watching that golf thing, golf tournament all day. Men or women watching their Bollywood dramas, okay, or Bollywood movies. You know, a lot of people do this, and they say we're trying to pass time. I mean, that's the one, one uh, elder, he was saying that that's the most uh, detrimental comment to make. I'm trying to pass time. Each second that we have is, you know what they say, money, uh, sorry, time is money? Well, here, time is money for us in the hereafter. If we're going to waste that time, we're never going to get it back. 
And that's why when a person when he goes back to Allah, he's already been facilitated in paradise, the only thing that he is going to regret. SubhanAllah, I mean, he's got paradise, he's got eternal bliss, he's got eternal happiness, he's got nothing to worry about. However, however still, he's going to be regretting one thing. And you, you know, note this down, note my words, write the time, and write the date. One whole month without watching that garbage, without watching that tree, you tell me after one month how your mind feels. Because right now our mind is so occupied when I go, you know, this, this, we're, we're surrounded by the virtual world. When I wake up in the morning, I have a tune running at the back of my head. You know, some song I heard a few days ago over the radio, even a song I heard 20 years ago. It's running at the back of my head. On this side of my head, I, I, um, I have an image of a movie scene. On this side of my head, I have an image of a TV serial. On this side of my head, I have, it, uh, I have the conversation I was having on face, Facebook that is going on. My mind is so, there's so much interference going on, I can't even think for myself. <coughs> what you want to do is try and free yourself from all of that garbage, and really it is. It's, there's more negativity that comes out of it than positivity. So just do that for the one month. Turn that tube off. Okay, try and sacrifice all those time, all that, all that time you spend on Facebook, and try and refrain from YouTube. Just try and keep away, yeah, if you need to use it out of necessity, email. I mean, this is just the way we communicate nowadays. If out of necessity you need to use it, use it. But my personal recommendation is that try and stay away from it, and then after that one month, just assess yourself and see that, you know what? I'm me now. I can think for myself. I don't have all this interference in my head. You feel so good about yourself, and I'm saying this to experience. This is not something that is hypothetical. I'm saying this to experience. You feel so free, and you feel less stress. You feel less anxiety. You're not agitated as much as you are right now. Right now, you know, the smallest thing. The wife, she, you know, she said something that. All of a sudden, we didn't, we're not comfortable with it. And they just throw a huge tantrum. We turn into a volcano. Okay? So small little thing. We're so easily agitated. One is to break the fast. And depending on how you broke the fast, different rulings are going to apply. But those different rulings are put under two subcategories. Either you have to re repeat the fast and give a kafala and penalty, or you simply just have to repeat the fast. It says here to eat or drink deliberately after eating or drinking accidentally, thinking that the fast is broken by eating and drinking accidentally. Okay, so what happens is I go home and I totally forget that I'm in a fasting state, and that happens sometimes because you're so occupied in your thoughts. I gotta get this done, I gotta get that done, and on, you're on the go. We're always on the go. That's just the nature of our society. We're always on the go. So as I'm going and I'm thinking and I'm on my, my, I'm on my iPhone or I'm on my Blackberry, I'm tapping away and there's a little snack on the counter, I just grab it and I start eating, and then all of a sudden, I'm fasting. Okay, now because I ate that, all of a sudden I'm in the impression, well, my fast is broken anyways, just finish it off. Okay? So when you actually engage in the initial eating act, that didn't break your fast because you did it accidentally. You didn't even know that you're in the fasting state. That didn't break your fast. But after that, you thought, well, what the heck now? My fast is broken. I'll just you know, go ahead and finish the meal. Okay, then now your fast is officially broken. Okay? <laughs> وأطرب الكون لحنا وجود النغمات وأطرب